So, this is where I'm staying for the next couple of weeks, or have been staying, depending mm -hmm. whether you're looking at this in a past tense or a future tense. I didn't want Will to stay with me in my flat with my parents. Yeah, I live with my parents still. So, we'll have to rent a flat in this nice, very nice place. Oh, the door's open anyway, so... Maybe I should close it and open it just for the sake of it. So everyone can get an idea of how badass this door is. Oh, look! I've got the magic button. Oh. Come into the bunker. Is it going a bit funny, the camera with the lighting? No, no, it's very dark. Oh. Will was so terrified for the first time. I wasn't really terrified. You was. No, but like in all honesty, at first it looked maybe slightly intimidating, but it has its, it has its charms. As we can see, open wiring, elevator, very handy. Keep looking at the graffiti. Do, 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 do. And we are on floor eight, I think. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Atmospheric shop. This one? Yes, this one. Ah. Once for good measure, twice for good measure, and three times, yay! And then we have special key, a screw one. People who know something about Belarusian politics will understand this picture. Yes, not me. And yeah, just random cigarette advertising up on the wall. Yes. That's how we do it, bros. Oh, then the funky key. I think I've done it. No. What, what do you mean, what am I doing? You meant to push it in and turn no, it, yeah? No, 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 no. No? Okay, you just... Great, I just the tough one, I'm not an idiot. Oh, God, I think the flat. Here we go. Come sweet home. Ta-da! Welcome to flat Peppy Pepper. It's awesome. not my flat. It's this this quite quite not very clean here. Lots of mess and vacuum cleaner and the floor. Don't show my mess. No, it doesn't <laughs> happen. Don't show my mess. Okay, and dust kitchen, dust bathroom. In the kitchen now. Where Peppy's had me slaving away cooking her meals 24-7. Please save me. And um, no, yes. and doing all the washing up. Yeah, no, no. I think we've been good and we've shared, wouldn't you say? Hmm? Yeah, we've shared. Shared the washing up and cooking. Yes, we've yes. shared. We've had more arguments about who gets to do it than who doesn't do it. If that makes sense. Figure it out. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. So, yes, this is the outside from our window. Funky windows. No, 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 no. I'd be a beautiful bride, would I? Yes? Yeah. Yes, beautiful bride. So yeah, it's outside, that's flat. Check it out. So when I arrived, just under two weeks ago now, everything still had snow, it was covered in snow. Yeah. No, everything's melted. Snow is everywhere. I'll put up some pictures of the snow. Snow moment. So that's that. Um, yes, what is exciting? Look inside a better Russian fridge. Oh no. Yes, go look inside the don't, fridge. Don't show. Da, da, da. I'll take the camera now. Ba, ba, ba. So lots of lovely food and jars and some ham and some beers. Just a chicken crown. This chicken crown, it costs 27, nearly 28,000 Belarusian rubles. Yeah. Okay. And then some of. Oh no, Tanya's gonna. Oh, 
Peppy's gonna be angry if I show you this. This was the balcony that she was cooking earlier. Oh no, I showed them! And then lots of pickles in jars and creams and more beers. Yes. Oh, that tomato is not doing very well. Let's zoom in it's on the. It's not. <laughs> da, 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 da. It's not even a tomato, it's an orange. Da, 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 da. Oh, oranges, nobody. Nobody loves those oranges. We're far too interested in pickle and chicken. So, yeah. That's that. Oh no, it's hide quickly, hide, hide from the camera, hide from the camera. Oh no, 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 no. You don't want to be in the camera. So yes, this is it. This is the lovely Belarusian kitchen, I like it. No, it's microwave. And Russian TV. Everyone wants to see Russian TV. Yes. Oh my word, look. Yeah, this is this is counter piracy. Usually kind of like Belarus pirates star stuff. We're gonna get revenge. So we just drove here in Peppy's dad's awesome Dodge. We listened to dubstep all the way. Peppy's dad is incredible. And here we are at, where are we? Uh, the Yeah, we are in the Slavl, ah. in the Minsk area. And as you guys might be able to see, there is some tanks. So we're gonna have to go and check them out in just a second. See what's happening. This is pretty cool. Do 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 do. And then we're getting over towards the main stuff now. Oh. Yeah. Two hundred and three millimeter cannon. That's pretty ridiculous. What does that translate to, Tanya? Mm, have no idea, to be honest. Okay. Whoa. I cannot read anything. Maybe someone who will watch your video will translate it. This is a T80, this is a modern tank. Wow. That is pretty cool. Look at that. T fifty five? Wow. Oh, it's just an IS three. No, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. Look at that. Oh, gotta get the gun in as well. Da, 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 da. It's amazing. This is one of the things, one of the best tank designs they had. Oh. Oh, do you want to be in the video? No. 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 <laughs> no. no. Don't want to be in the video. Thank you very much. What did your dad say? It's a big car. Yeah, it's a, a cool serious piece of kit. This should be an ISU 152.
Wow. Da 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 da. Pretty cool. Soviet Belarus. <laughs> Is it not unacceptable? Is it not yes. acceptable? Yes. Oi, oi, oi. Are you going to be in the video? Ah, oh, quick turn around. Oh no. Don't worry, I've turned it off now. Oh no, I haven't. Oh, gonna be in trouble. Do, 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 do. It's pretty cool. So the tanks that you just saw were located at an outdoor military museum just outside Minsk at what used to be the, the Stalin line as you can quite clearly see in this next image. This really hit home to me, the, the defensive location the, they really built up around here. Um, this tree stump is actually fake and snipers slash uh, people observing the line would be um, situated in it so they could have better camo from the enemy. There were lots of open bunkers which we could go down into, some which still had armaments in and propaganda written up on the walls. Here we can see an AT gun, which I think was possible to fire for about the price of $12, but I hadn't organized it and we didn't have time. Maybe next time I'll do it. There are a number of airplanes on display, of which I'm not very knowledgeable, but you should definitely check it out if you're ever in the Minsk area. There were even surface-to-air missiles on display, as well as what I believe to be a decommissioned ICBM, but maybe someone will prove me wrong. Here we can see a combination of propaganda and a well-placed SU-100 up on the hill. Absolutely crazy. Will is playing with killing machines. I'm playing with killing machines. He's so cute. <laughs> Pretty cool. Warmongering aside, afterwards we went to somewhere which was very humbling, called the Katyun Memorial. It highlights how many Belarusians died in World War II, which was one in four of the population at the time, which is uh, an unbelievable amount. At this location, uh, a village in World War II, 186 people were, were burned alive, and now there are a series of bells located at all the houses that were existed at the time, and a bell. these bells all ring out every 30 seconds to commemorate uh, the death of a Belarusian every 30 seconds during the period of World War II. This is a statue of Yusuf Kaminsky, who was apparently the only survivor in the village, carrying his dying son as a commemorative and very powerful statue. It's an amazing place. And we can all make light of the fact that we play a, a war simulation game, but we shouldn't forget about the, the terrible nature of war itself. Ready to fight at a moment's notice. <laughs> Ready to just jump in the tanks? You fully trained. Yes. What would be your true. role in a gunner? Um, what would be your role in the tank? My role. Yeah. Ah, uh, so you'll be the gunner. That is pretty cool. All right. You're gonna have to get back in the gear. Which one would you prefer to use then? Out of all of these. She's running away. Do 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 do. I'm gonna follow you around. Stop running. Era, will you while I climb up on the tank? Look at it. There you go. Так, на что тут нажать, Таня? Тань! 
На что нажать? Ничего, да? На здоровье. Lisa, watch out, don't look. No, oh, she's in a video. <laughs> oh, we're gonna turn it around. No. 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 Oh, no, you're hiding. Duh. It's so cold. So it's seven o'clock in the evening. It's about 13 degrees out. It's beautiful weather. And no, it's actually just, cold. Just, huh? It's actually cold. It's just warm for you. 13 degrees for someone from Britain is very warm, as everyone will know, because we don't get any sun in the UK. So we've just been to the park, and now we're just walking um, back to the supermarket, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah? And um, I'd just like to point out now just how much construction there is going on right in Minsk. I mean, you look at it, and every everywhere you look, really, there's buildings that are being going up and... I'm not sure, I mean, walking around the UK, everything seems to be closing down. And just walking around Minsk, everything seems to be being built. And it's something that's just very interesting, I thought I'd point out. Yeah, it's dirty everywhere. Oh, it's dirty everywhere. That's one thing I will point out though, is that um, while they are being built, there's a hell of a lot that's unfinished. And, uh, and the way that it looks is, is not how much of the construction in other countries might look, I think. But, you know, it's getting done. It's getting done. Cool. So that's the beginning of all roads in Belarus. Mm -hmm. So it's written there that it is only 700 kilometers to Moscow, 100... Um, 99. kilometers to Mogilev. It's another city in Belarus. Ah. So this is the, basically the center of Belarus, is it? Mm. Or the center of Minsk? Yeah, historical center of Belarus. Historical center of Belarus. So what's that building over there? It's just a building with the Belarusian news on. Very interesting, very interesting. And on the right you can see the public palace. The palace. The public palace. Is that where the, that's where the king of Belarus lives, yeah? Yeah. What's this building? Okay, we don't know. This is a nice looking building.
So, when I arrived in Minsk, it wasn't as warm as you might have seen previously in the video. Here you can see the Minsk Sea, which is just a few kilometers outside Minsk, which is about a five kilometer area of water, which has been uh, artificially captured, put in place, and it's used for kind of water activities during the summer. And here you can see this basically is a giant block of ice at the start of the holiday. So while I was there, I was lucky enough to be able to go to the National Academic Bolshoi Opera and Ballet Theatre of the Republic of Belarus, as you're seeing in these photos, where we got to see... So while in Belarus I try to eat as many of the local dishes as possible, here we can see pelmini, which is basically dumplings in sort of a stock. Uh, to describe it, it's basically almost a shredded meat served wrapped in, in dough. Here we can see a pork shin served with pickle, sliced pickle. And the potato that you can see there is sort of a hybrid between, between a baked potato and a roast potato. Peppy impressed me with the food that she cooked while we weren't eating out. Um, some absolutely lovely dishes, lots of mushrooms and pork and cheese and creams. It's a very rich kind of diet, I found. And these are daranaki, which are potato pancakes served with cream. Here are examples of meals that we had with Peppy's parents and grandparents. It's almost like a kind of a tapas -y kind of thing with lots of sliced vegetables, sliced meats, kalbasa, which is basically like salami, but there are many, many different kinds of kalbasa, as I found in Belarus. The salads were very different. They're quite heavy and flavorful compared to the salads that maybe you would get over here. You can see there Pepe's grandma made some amazing meatballs and basically I'd say sautéed potatoes, whole sautéed potatoes. Maybe you're wanting to go and see Belarus, but you're not wanting to take part in the diet? Well, never fear, because some things are universal, even in Cyrillic. I drank quite a lot while I was in Belarus, and you can see here some Zlaty Balzant, which is a Slovakian beer. This wasn't my favourite, I have to add. And, that, and that I'm meaning no offence to any Slovakian viewers that I might have. <laughs> I love you guys. There are also many versions of specific beers. He can see a Heineken that's brewed in Belarus that has a different name. Now while the lagers were quite nice, my favourite was this, which is Alavario, which is a dark beer, and oh my god, this is tasty, tasty, tasty. I would quite like to get a hell of a lot of bottles there if I lived, and this is probably all I would drink. Now there was more vodka available in the supermarkets than there was wine. Here you can see a Bulbush Nano Vodka, which is very clean. I wouldn't pretend to be a vodka connoisseur. Although, when I went to see Peppy's dad for the first time, I drank a lot of vodka with that gentleman. And each time after uh, drinking vodka, we had a, a piece of lemon and ate the rind as well. Apparently that was what was meant to be good. And we just kept eating and drinking and must have ended up having like about 10 vodkas after a bunch of wine. And I was fine and 
I was quite happy to uh, be able to keep up with, a, <laughs> albeit a, a quite a, a slight Belarusian gentleman. City. This is a really cool monument. Wait a minute. Where were this name? Oh, yes. He exaggerated twice as much, did he? Thanks. Ah, you can be the video. No, no. Okay, film me then, just for a second. No, I'm afraid. So unfortunately, when turning the camera this way, the, there was so much wind that this part of the video has become inaudible. So I thought I'd just quickly tell you with a voiceover what I was roughly talking about here. I was saying how impressed I was with this monument, which is called the Mound of Glory. I think it directly translates into, and I thought that the kind of the the Soviet architecture was was just really striking. I think I use that word quite a lot, really, to describe the kind of architecture and the monuments to to I guess victories in World War Two. Um, what quite to think about it. <sighs> I think in the UK there's a, a certain lack of these kind of monuments to, I guess, achievements in World War II is what I think I was saying here. But I think that it's quite patriotic and it's proud and there's so many of these all of different types in Belarus. They're definitely well worth seeing, guys. You should definitely go and check them out if you're interested. So what is this place? This is the Island of Tears. Mm -hmm. Why is it called the Island of Tears? Because lots of women cried here because of their loss, their husbands and relatives died. This whole area is insane. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Gorgeous. Love you. So I thought I'd just talk quickly about the public transport in Belarus, which is quite an important thing for many people. There are buses and they usually come every 10 minutes. And also there is, as you can see above, an underground in Minsk, which has got two lines that cross in the middle. 
Now, one trip on a bus and one trip on the underground is the same price. It's 1,700 Belarusian rubles, which is about 20 cents, 20 cents, a fifth of a dollar. You have to pay every time on the underground, but I found that you only have to pay for about a third of the times you actually use the bus because that's how often they have a ticket inspector on the buses. If public transport isn't your thing, the roads in Minsk are not too busy and you could always rent a car if you have an international driving license. But if that's not your thing either and you still don't want to use public transport, then there are taxis which are readily available. Whenever we caught up a taxi, it arrived in about 5 or 10 minutes and about a 15 or 20 minute journey will cost you in the region of about $7. So, we're in the centre of Minsk and this is the river. Did I say it right? Yes, you yes. said it. Yes, yes, I said it very good. No, I found out that the only way I can speak Russian is if I feel very sad, put a very sad face on, otherwise I can't pronounce Russian. So that's that's how that has to be. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the weather is beautiful. It is. What time is it? What time is it? It's 5.15 and it's still really quite warm. I think it's about, what is it, about 10 degrees, 12 degrees, something like that? 12. 12. Mm. 12. 12. And this place is beautiful. The place is beautiful. The river is um, not the cleanest, but still quite nice. And just there. because after the winter. Just because of, just after the snow melt. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm here with Peppy Pepper. How am I ever going to call you that the whole time? It makes no sense. But I must try. I must try. And we have Peppy's favorite building over there behind the tree. It's not my favorite building. It's our, it's our favorite building. Apparently, that's the most beautiful building in the whole of Minsk. And if you come to Minsk, you have to go and see that building. No, it is the ugliest building in Minsk. It is the ugliest building in Minsk. Yeah. So, um,. As I mentioned, or will mention, in a different part of the vlog, you can see that everything seems to be being built. There's like cranes over on that building over there. And then if we look behind you as well, there's like cranes on that building. Everywhere's being built in Minsk. It's so amazing. Having a lovely time. Got a couple days left. Gonna make the most of them. So I'm gonna turn the camera around now on you. Mm, no, I don't want to be alone. Come on, you look lovely. Let me find a good shot for you. What do you want me to say? You say whatever you want. What do you want to say? Um, um, I should prepare for this. You should prepare for this. <laughs> so, this is the super scary chat moderator, Peppy Pepper. Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't she mm -hmm. terrifying? Absolutely terrifying. So when you're all getting your asses kicked in chat, then you know, so now you know what's kicking your backside. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to say a big thank you for all of you guys for helping us and spotting us and Quickie Baby and um, say big hello to Angle Dust and Bestie because I promised. So I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who helps me out. Leaves comments below, I try to read them all. And everyone who watches, just a, a massive thank you to you all. Um, I hope that you've liked the YouTube videos I've been putting up in the last couple of weeks while I've been in Belarus and that now that I'm back that you'll all be tuning into the live streams, yes. And just a big thank you to Peppy Pepper, if I'm going to call you that, for um, inviting me to Minsk and that we've had oh, a, a really lovely time. So yeah, 